Thank you again for joining us. I'm Levi Ismail with Open Line, and here I'm joined with Dr. James Antone from Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and we're talking about triple demic. Now, if you don't know what that is, triple demic, COVID, flu, RSV. Now, we've talked a little bit about treatments regarding some of these, and you know, we've talked a fair amount about the vaccines, but tell us a little bit more about some of the other treatments that are out there. Sure, for, for flu, we have um, a number of antivirals that we know work if you use them early uh, when, when you have your infection, so within 48 hours of getting your symptoms. And then we know that for people who have risk factors for having severe influenza complications, that regardless of how long you've had symptoms, that they can be helpful. And so by far and away, the most common one we use is Tamiflu or Ozoltamivir. It's a pill that you take twice a day for five days. Uh, and it's been shown to decrease the duration or how long that you have flu symptoms. It's also been shown to prevent some complications from the flu like pneumonia and ear infections that can happen afterward. And we know that in those high risk populations it can help prevent hospitalization. And it works better the earlier you take it. So if you're having a high fever and flu-like symptoms, of any age, it's worth calling your doctor to see if you're eligible to get Tamiflu because it can make you feel better a little bit faster. I see. There's some new flu medications that are out there. There's one called Zofluza or Biloxivir. That's one pill once that works as good as Tamiflu. That medication's a little more expensive and so we still prescribe Tamiflu the most, but there's a Tamiflu shortage in, in different areas in the United States and there are other options that we can use other than Tamiflu. There's an inhaled medication called Relenza that you can take. Um, you can't use that in people with COPD or asthma, but it also works quite well, just as well as, as Tamiflu does in, in preventing sort of a, a long course of symptoms with the flu. And so it's, it really is worth talking to your doctor if you have the flu to see if you can get one of these medications, especially if it's early in the course or if you have a lot of uh, medical conditions. I'm sure a lot of people might have questions about any one of the <laughs> treatments that you just mentioned there. Um, of course, the number is right there, 615-737-7587. If you have any questions for Dr. Antone, just on that alone, I mean, it, you would imagine that if someone is concerned about, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel something, don't know quite what it is, but I'm starting to feel something. I mean, at, at that point, you're really not sure what you tell the doctor, you know, in terms of, you know, what you should be taking. So how does, how does someone like yourself, um, you know, pres prescribe something when people aren't quite sure what they have at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's hard. Uh, you know, it's helpful to have home COVID tests. We don't have home flu tests. We don't have home RSV tests, but we have home COVID tests. So if you do feel something coming on, first you can take a COVID test at home and see if you have COVID. That's, that's certainly helpful for your doctor to know if that test was positive or negative. Um, but it can be, you, you can't distinguish based on symptoms alone what virus you have. All three of those viruses and all of our other winter viruses can cause fever, cough, sore throat, they can cause you know, vomiting and diarrhea and nausea and stomach symptoms. Um, so they have a lot of overlapping symptoms to where you, you really can't tell other than loss of smell for COVID that this is the virus that you have. If you're having high fevers, you, f you have muscle aches and, and fatigue and uh, you know, sore throat and you just feel really crummy, it, it's worth going to the doctor and getting tested for the flu. We used to say, or the CDC would recommend, during flu season, if you have flu-like symptoms, that's the flu. When it's circulating at high levels, that's most likely the virus, that's most likely what virus you have, mm -hmm. and we'll prescribe these antivirals over the phone. And we'll still do that. Um, but with all of these viruses circulating at, circulating at the same time, it's a little bit harder uh, to tell you know, which medication we should give, and testing can be particularly helpful. Absolutely. I'm imagining right now that if some, if you're getting a, a call or you know, maybe it's like telemedicine or something like that where someone's reaching out to you and they're wondering what's going on with their kids, uh, you could probably just look at what's going on with everybody else and figure out that chances are this is the same thing, one and the same. Absolutely. So if, if somebody in your household has a flu and had a positive flu test and, you're, and you call with symptoms, that's enough for us. Mm -hmm. uh, or if somebody in your house has COVID and you're having some symptoms, I mean, odds are that's COVID and we can manage this stuff over the phone and prescribe the medication that you would need to help with that particular virus. So, uh, you know, household transmission is very common. You know, school outbreaks are, are becoming common with the flu. And so knowing what's going on in the community can be helpful and, and managing some of the stuff outside of the doctor's office. What is the question that you often hear when uh, when parents are calling you about you know something that they're not quite sure 
you know, maybe their kids are having or experiencing? What is something that you you hear more often now, perhaps, than you have in the past? Yeah, I think there's a lot of questions about what to do with school. Um, you know, my child is having symptoms. Can they go to school? Um, is this something where where uh, is it is it safe to go to school? And I think now we have a lot more information with children on how COVID affects them, how having two viruses affect them, and and we know um, that these kids, by far and away, are safe to go to school. Um, there's been some cases in the community where we've shut down schools where they've had flu outbreaks and, and we know that does help stop transmission um, but the big unknown is is kind of my child is having these symptoms it could be anything what, what is it and what can I do and the answer to that for for us is all of the measures that worked for winter viruses in years past work this year you know Tylenol and Motrin for fever kind of you know steam showers or humidifiers to help with some of the congestion and and runny nose and, and get some of the gunk out you know, if you're older than one year old, uh, one years old, the uh, spoonful of honey before bed can help with nighttime cough. All of these measures, symptomatic measures that helped in the past, will help with these viruses this season. We're just seeing a lot more of it than we typically do. And so, how do you kind of uh, temper some of the concerns that people have when they're thinking? I'm, I'm hearing about all of these different things that are out there right now. There's this word now that they have called triple demic, and you know there's there's a lot of concern whether it's kids going to school or you know even the parents being in public spaces. What would you tell them about? where their concern level should be at this point? Yeah, I, I think we're so far into this pandemic that most people have either gotten the vaccine or gotten the infection at some point. And we have very few people who have no underlying immunity to, to COVID. What's really going to help protect, especially young children and the elderly, is getting vaccines for these viruses to, to help prevent transmission to those who either can't get the vaccine, can't mount a response to the vaccine, or would be high risk if they get the, the, the virus even though they've gotten the vaccine. And so uh, I was very concerned before my children were eligible for the COVID vaccine that they would get COVID and have some of these complications that we see in kids. Uh, and I'm much more comfortable now with them going to school and daycare knowing that they're vaccinated for COVID and that they're vaccinated for the flu. Um, flu, I think a lot of people don't appreciate how severe the flu can be in young kids and in the elderly. Again, because we haven't seen it for a couple of years or, or meaningful flu for, for two or three seasons, but uh, flu flu can be really bad uh, for young children and for the elderly. And, and I am much more comfortable with my kids being out in the community, playing sports, going to activities, knowing that they have these vaccines on board, that if they do get these viruses, that they're gonna have a less severe infection than they otherwise would. So would you say that, I mean, someone like myself who, when I hear the flu, uh, you know, if a, if, a, if a friend of mine gets the flu, excuse me, if a friend of mine gets the flu and they say, yeah, I've got the flu, I don't imme immediately think, okay, worst case scenario. You know, I'm probably thinking, yeah, they'll recover in two or three days time, no big deal or whatever. But just from what you've mentioned, you know, this, this can have complications beyond just you know, the, the ordinary flu that you might think in your head is nothing to be too worried about. Yeah. Most otherwise healthy adults who get the flu will have five to seven days of a really, really bad cold. That's, that's kind of the course that it takes. But young kids, the elderly, and those who have underlying conditions like um, immune problems, uh, those who have asthma, those who have sickle cell disease, those who have kidney problems, COPD, those who have underlying conditions, flu can be more than just a really bad cold. It, ca it can cause pneumonia, it can cause secondary bacterial infections where you can get meningitis or pneumonias or ear infections, it can cause encephalitis. There are all these rare complications from the flu that add up to being not as, not as rare when you, when you look at them all together. And that's, that's why physicians year after year get on TV and talk about the flu because we see how bad it really can be in those populations uh, that, that have these risk factors for, for influenza. You know, one of the questions that we have down here is uh, something that I wanted to make sure that I asked. People are saying that we no longer are in a pandemic, right? And so part of that seems true because obviously we've seen what being in the midst of a pandemic where you have schools shut down and everything shut down. We've seen what that looks like, but other parts don't necessarily feel the same, you know, mm -hmm. as that. So what would you say about the status of COVID-19 and, you know, where we are right now with COVID? 
Yeah, pandemic has become this loaded term. Uh, and so there's there's an argument of, are we in a pandemic? Is this now endemic where it's just going to be around and we just got to deal with it? Uh, you know, is it is it now seasonal like the flu is? And we're just going to need a, a yearly COVID shot like we have a yearly flu shot. And I, I think the answer to that is we really don't know yet. I, I think most people or most kind of uh, respiratory illness experts would agree we're moving in the direction of this being somewhat like flu where we're going to need a, a yearly booster for for COVID, but we just don't know yet because it, it, we keep getting these new variants uh, that occur. Um, we're definitely not going back to a, you know, a worsening pandemic, and I think we've all come to really learn to live with this virus around in the community. You know, this is just a particularly uh, hazardous time because of RSV and flu being at high levels, and, and next year, this may not happen at all. You know, we might level out with some of these viruses. We just don't know yet. Gotcha. Dr. Anton, we'll be right back. Again, that number is 615-737-7587. We'll be back.